Hey guys and welcome back to the Mr Baker's Cakes Kitchen and another episode of the Kenwood Kids Club. Now in today's episode we're going to be keeping things super simple and I'm going to be showing you how to make one of the first recipes my mum ever taught me. I think I must have been somewhere around seven years old when she first showed me how to make her version of a spaghetti bolognese and though I'm reluctant to call it a bolognese because Italian purists will know it doesn't really follow any of the traditional steps of that recipe. It's what I knew as bolognese for many, many years. And if nothing else, it's a really tasty recipe with meat and tomato and all those kind of Italian flavors that you would expect. What's great about it as well is that you can customize it to your preferences by including different vegetables like carrots, celery, pepper, mushroom, whatever you fancy. And in fact, I most often make this with um, a vegetarian mince as well. So although we'll be using meat mince today, you can literally just swap those out, no problems at all. Now, we are going to be completely making it from scratch today. So I really shouldn't waste any more time talking. Let's actually get cooking. Now we're going to be doing everything in one pan on the hob today, but I have cooked up a batch of our homemade pasta from last week's episode in advance, which I've got sat off to the side there, and we might need to just give it a quick reheat before we dish it all up. But again, if you haven't yet watched last week's episode and you'd like to know how to make fresh pasta in a super simple way, then do by all means go and check that one out. And then of course you can whip up a batch of this take on a bolognese to top it with and have a super delicious dinner knowing that you have done all the hard work and made everything from scratch. Now, we're going to start with one kind of medium to large white onion today. And we have gone through how to safely cut an onion before in our hidden veg pizza sauce episode. So by all means do scroll back and look that up. But I'm also going to kind of whiz through it again today just so that if you haven't seen that one, you're not left thinking that you've missed out. So all I've done so far is cut that onion in half, and I am using a very sharp knife today, so you do need to make sure that you're working safely, and you must have an adult nearby just to make sure that you are okay. So I'm peeling off that, those brown layers of skin, because the ones we want to get to are these nice kind of white greeny layers, and we're going to do that with both halves. Because we've cut the onion in half, you should find that you can just peel those back from the top, and then they can go into your recycling, uh, sorry, into your compost bin so that you can use them in the garden. Next, we're going to cut the onion across the top, and you'll notice that I'm holding my hand in what we call the claw so that those fingernails are the thing that are closest to that knife and they'll be protecting me to make sure I don't cut myself. So we're cutting off the top of the onion on both halves. Again, we can pop those into our compost bin. And then to actually cut the onion itself, we're just going to start by making some little slices into the top from that cut edge here down to the base, using that claw to protect our fingers. Now, if you like the taste of onion in your food, you can make these chops quite big and chunky. If, like me, you prefer it to be kind of more understated and more there just to give flavor, you can make them smaller. And then we're just going to turn the onion and cut in the same way that we did to cut that top off, giving us nice, tiny pieces of onion, like that. Super simple and super easy, and that's very much the theme of today's episode. Okay, we'll get rid of that bottom bit there, and then do exactly the same with that other half. So, making those little cuts down towards the base, Having a sharp knife really does help with this. Okay, and then turning it around, and just like before, going across the top. And you'll see that gives us lots and lots of tasty onion cut up into tiny pieces. Running out of 
have room on my board. Again, we'll get rid of that bottom bit, and then it's time to turn on the hob. Now I'm using an electric hob today, so you will hear it slightly in the background. And I've got a really big pan here so that you can see what's going on, but any kind of saucepan that's big enough to hold plenty of ingredients will be absolutely fine. And we're going to start by putting a drizzle of olive oil, into the bottom of that pan, and about a teaspoon of butter. I like to cook my onion in both olive oil and butter together, as I find that they stop the onions burning so much, and that butter gives it a really nice taste. What can I say, I love butter. Okay, once I can see that that pan is starting to warm up, and I can tell because I can see the butter and oil bubbling in the middle there, I'm literally just going to scrape the onion into the pan, like that. Now I like to cook my onion for as long as possible on quite a low temperature, because just like I said in the hidden pizza sauce recipe video, I like it to soften down and go nice and translucent. So the longer you can leave it on a lower temperature, the better. You can even try putting a lid on your pan as well, as that will trap some of that moisture in and help keep it nice and soft. While that starts doing its thing, we're going to chop up a red pepper, and that's the other vegetable that I'm going to be using in my bolognese sauce today. If you're not a fan of pepper, you could try in, um, including carrots, you could use, um, oh gosh, mushrooms. Celery, as I said last time, is a really lovely flavour to include in any sort of cooking. But any vegetables that you like, really, are absolutely fine. That's one of the great things about this recipe. When I was little, my mum used to always make it with mushrooms, but I can't stand mushrooms so they never make their way into my version. So it really is just about choosing things that you like and including them. Okay, and again, we're just going to chop this pepper up into nice small pieces and add it into the pan with that onion. Something like this is really good if you're just getting into your cooking because there's lots of chances to practice your chopping skills. I'm not too worried about making sure all these are the same size or the same shape because they're going to be cooking for long enough that they're just going to go nice and soft inside our sauce. One thing I will say is that this kind of take on a bolognese gets more and more delicious the longer you leave it. And so quite often I'll cook it in advance and then reheat it in time for dinner. So again, although, and I say it every week, although I'm cooking within quite a specific time frame today, you guys can take your time. You don't need to rush at all. Okay, so in the pan now, if you're just joining us, we have got a drizzle of olive oil, we've got about a teaspoon of butter, and I always use salted butter in my cooking, and then we've got one kind of medium to large white onion, and a red pepper, both of which we've chopped up nice and finely. Now don't forget, you can go to the Kenwood Kids Club website to get the exact recipe, because although I talk about a drizzle, or a blob, or a handful or a pinch. When I write out the recipe for the website, I do make sure I use really accurate measurements. So do, by all means, go and check that out. Okay. 
Next, going into that, we're going to add in some more kind of flavour boosting ingredients. And one of those is garlic puree. Garlic puree is so much easier to use than fresh garlic because you can just keep it in the fridge in a jar or in a squeezy tube and it's there for whenever you want to add a little bit of garlic to your recipes. I think I've got about a teaspoon in this ramekin today. Might need a spoon. And that's just going in there with our vegetables. And we've also got some dried oregano. Now oregano is one of my absolute favorite herbs for using when I'm making an Italian style recipe. It just has that kind of really subtle Italian flavor. You'll recognize it when you have pizza, lots of pasta recipes. And again, it's something that you can have dried in your cupboard and it's there ready as soon as you need it. Most of the ingredients in this recipe are just things you generally have on hand and that's why it's perfect for coming in after school, get jumping in the kitchen with your family and just cooking it up for your dinner. And although I say it tastes best after a while, it doesn't mean that you can't just whip it up in half an hour like I am today. Okay, we're also going to add some seasoning. So there's some salt and some pepper. And then again, we're just going to leave that to allow the vegetables to soften down. Okay, now today we're going to be using a beef mince to make our bolognese. Um, and I'm using 5% fat beef. I've just loosely crumbled it into this bowl, but we'll continue to break it down once we've added it into the pan. And what we want to do, once we've got it in there, is just break it up, as I say, because we don't want any big clumps of meat. We want it to be nice and broken up. So I'm just stirring the vegetables in through the meat. Again, taking my time. There is no rushing at all. And what we're looking for is for that pink beef mince to go a nice pale brown colour because that will show us that it's all cooked. So at the moment I'm just working it down through the vegetables to the bottom of the pan where it will get some heat. And then we're just going to keep it moving so that it cooks evenly and we don't end up burning it anywhere. If you end up making your bolognese recipe with a slightly higher fat content meat, what you will find is that it will re release more liquid into your mixture. If that's the case, and this is probably advice more for mums and dads or carers at home, just make sure that you cook your meat off first so that you can drain away that excess liquid and then you can just go through the same stage as we've gone through today by cooking our vegetables and then put that pre-cooked mince back in at this stage. It just makes for a slightly healthier recipe rather than one that's swimming in, in fat. So I don't know if this shows up on camera yet, but hopefully you'll be able to see that the mince is starting to brown. So I'm just turning the mixture over so that that pink mince on the top is working its way down and still breaking it up because you will find that it will clump together again as it cooks. Now as I say, this is one of the first recipes I ever learned to cook and Thinking back, once I'd learned to cook it, I used to want to cook it all the time. So my family probably ate this at least a few times a week. And for the most part, they were very complimentary about seven-year-old me cooking. I think they prefer it now though.
Now as you can see I'm just continually moving this around and that's what's quite fun about this recipe. It isn't one that you just walk away and leave. You do actually get to do some cooking. You get to stand it, you get to stay, you get to mix. And so again, if you're quite a keen young cook, this is definitely a good one to get cracking on. And think how impressed people will be when you say that you've made your own pasta and your own bolognese sauce. It does, of course, mean that you get to stand and watch me just stirring the pan for quite a while. So I hope that's not too boring. But I do believe we are getting somewhere. So most of our mince has now gone a nice pale brown colour. Our vegetables are softening up, and particularly those onions are starting to go a nice translucent colour, which hopefully you'll remember means that it's starting to go a little bit see-through. With my teacher head on it. Translucent literally means that a light can pass through it, but we can't see through it. Now when you can't really see much in the way of pink anymore, and I'm almost there, we're going to add in some more ingredients. And the first one of those is going to be some double concentrate tomato puree. Now you've seen me use this before, but I'm not sure if I explained what it was. So tomato puree, it, especially concentrated tomato puree, is basically tomatoes that have been blended down and then cooked down so that the flavours really concentrate into a smaller amount of space or a smaller amount of paste. I always like to use tomato puree in tomato based recipes because personally I don't know that you get as much of a tomato punch as you want just from canned crushed tomatoes or chopped tomatoes or plum tomatoes depending on which version that you decide to choose. So I find that by adding the tomato puree you really punch up that tomato flavour that we're after. So I'm going to start by adding that in to the pan. And just stir that through to really make sure that tomato flavour travels throughout all of our bolognese, bolognese mixture. And those inverted commas are for any Italians who may be watching because bolognese is actually a very traditional Italian recipe from a place called Bologna and it has a very set way of cooking which we're not doing today so although I call it bolognese it really isn't proper bolognese okay next into here we are going to add in our tinned tomatoes and I'm using chopped tomatoes today and this is two tins so that's about 800 grams worth And then it's a case, again, of just stirring them in to this mixture. I normally do this in a deeper saucepan because it's a lot less, it's a lot trickier to spill mixture out of the side, but that isn't very good for you guys to see what's going on, which is why I've got this quite tricky pan. That means I have to be quite careful not to spill my bolognese mix while I'm stirring it. It is very satisfying being able to see it all day. Mm, and it's starting to smell really lovely and beefy and tomatoey and yummy. Now because in here we have got a lot of tomato which is very acidic and quite sharp we're going to add in another ingredient now that would just kind of help balance that slightly. And that 
is a teaspoon of sugar. I've got some, I think this is golden caster sugar, but that's just because that's what I had on hand. And bog standard, normal granulated sugar will be absolutely fine as well. And I also have some red wine vinegar. Now mums and dads, if you'd rather use real red wine, you can do that, absolutely. And again, if I was just cooking this for us at home, I might well do that. But this is the Kenwood Kids Club. Another tweak I like to add to mine, just to make it a bit more kind of grown up, is a decent teaspoon or two of chilli powder as well, because I really love that nice heat that it brings to the recipe. So if you're someone who really likes kind of spicy, aromatic food, that's something you can do as well. But again, we're going to keep this version really simple today because this is very much kind of the basic mix that you can then add things to to make it your own. And as I said earlier, this isn't exactly like it was when my mum taught me how to make it. This has kind of evolved over the years. The last couple of ingredients that will be going into my bolognese mix today are a little bit more seasoning and normally I would say taste your food to see how much seasoning you need to add but a little known fact I'm actually vegetarian and obviously we're using beef mints today so I won't be tasting mine I need a little bit more sugar try to get into the habit of teaching yourself of what things taste like and the, the changes you make to them by adding different things because that will help to kind of develop what we call your palate and that's how you understand how flavours work and how you can mix and match them to make really delicious combinations. Okay, and then the last secret ingredient that I like to add to my bolognese mix, I'm going to stop doing that, I promise, is one of those stock pots. Um, if you haven't seen them before, they're usually found in the same aisle of the supermarket as things like ready-made stock, stock cubes, gravy powder, things like that. And because we're using a beef mint today, I've got a beef stock pot. Now these are primarily designed for mixing with hot water to make stock for cooking, but I find that if I put one of these straight into my sauce, it really punches up that beefy flavour and makes it really rich and delicious. If I'm making the vegetarian version, I'd also do this using a veggie stock pot and I'd highly recommend giving it a go. If you don't have these, you can of course use a stock cube or even a teaspoon of gravy powder, who's gonna know? And then really, it's just a case of leaving this now to sit for as long as possible to allow all of these flavors to develop, to allow that sauce to reduce down slightly and just Mmm, it's going to be so yummy. I'm going to turn my heat up slightly because I do want to kind of hurry that process along. But at home, just leave yours on that lower heat and you can almost just pop a lid on it and walk away. Although we're reducing the sauce, don't pop a lid on it. Now, as I say, we're going to be serving our sauce today with the ready, uh, with the homemade pasta we made in last week's episode. So as I say, I've already got some of that set over here. And we're also going to be using some fresh basil on the top, just as a nice tasty garnish. So while this is doing its thing, we're going to chiffonard our basil. And again, if you haven't watched our hidden veg pizza sauce recipe, you're probably thinking, what on earth does that mean? So I'll show you again, don't worry. I have a basil plant which looks like this and this just lives on the windowsill in my kitchen. I cook lots of kind of tomato based recipes and as I said in that video, tomato and basil and cheese is one of my absolute favorite flavor combinations. So I'll quite often just reach over and pull some leaves off my plants and just throw them in my cooking. Now this started life as one of those small ones that are small basil plants that you can buy at the supermarket, but just by looking after it, making sure it gets plenty of sunlight, 
watering it regularly, it does just carry on thriving really until you've stripped it bare. I think I've had this one for gosh months and months now so they are very worth investing in if you're someone who does lots of cooking from scratch. I'm going for kind of medium sized leaves because I find they're the ones that have the most flavour. And then we'll pop that back to the side again. Give our sauce a little stir just to make sure it's not sticking. Mmm, it's really starting to smell good. It's a shame that we don't have smeller visions so that you can smell what I can smell. Mmm. Okay, back to our basil. So, just like I explained in the last video, we're going to stack our leaves up into a pile like this. It doesn't need to be a pretty pile. And then from the, one of the long sides, we're going to roll those leaves up into a sausage like this. And then just taking our knife, using that same claw technique as before, we're going to cut that into slices, which when they unroll, give us really smart looking strips of basil that look like that. And again, it just looks a little bit smarter on the top of your dish. Although, of course, you can just tear up your basil if you want to. Okay, now, of course, as always, unfortunately, time is against us. So, I am going to start to think about dishing up my pasta bolognese dinner. But if I was you, if you can, leave this at least for a good 20 minutes on a lower heat than I've got, because you can see that's bubbling away like mad. And just really allow some of that liquid to evaporate off, which is all this steam that you can see disappearing into the air. And those flavors will continue to develop and give you an absolutely scrumptious, look, not delicious for once, an absolutely scrumptious tasting pasta sauce that you can either serve over your pasta or you can even drop your pasta straight in so that it's absolutely coating the whole thing. Okay, so somehow, even though it's been about half an hour since I cooked it, I've managed to trap that heat in with my pasta and, oh it has pumped a little bit unfortunately, but I'm just going to pop some of that delicious fresh pasta into the bowl. And again, this is supposed to be a simple, quick dinner that you can either cook in advance and then reheat when you come in at the end of the day, or that you can have fun in the kitchen as a family making it. So I'm not gonna make the pasta look arranged or pretty, I'm just throwing some in a bowl. And then if I turn this off, I have a fly in my studio, how revolting. And then I'm just going to grab some of my mix and spoon it straight onto the top of that pasta, like so. And again, one of the beauties of this recipe is that you can customize it to include all of your favorite flavors. So if you're not a fan of peppers, leave the peppers out, add in some mushrooms, add in some carrots, add in some butternut squash, whatever sorts of vegetables you really enjoy eating in your dinner. And then, of course, the best way to finish off your pasta dish is with some freshly grated cheese. Now today, I've gone a little bit posh and I've got some proper Parmesan, which I'm just going to grate over the top, but I'll be honest with you, most of the time, I would just have mine with a big handful of mature cheddar and it's just as yummy. So there's a really, really healthy portion of Parmesan cheese, that fresh basil just sprinkled on the top and dinner is served. And doesn't that look absolutely scrumptious? 
Now, as always, if you decide to have a go at my bolognese style pasta dish, in fact, let's pop a little bit more pepper on because you can never have too much pepper. If you decide to have a go at my bolognese style pasta dish, do get in touch and tag Kenwood and Mr. Baker's Cakes on social media. And don't forget, I'll be back at the same time next week with another recipe. We might be finally tackling something bread-based, but you'll have to wait and see. Until then, guys, have an absolutely fantastic rest of the week. Happy cooking, and I'll see you soon. Take care.